Congratulations. I am so excited that I just can't, you know, hide it. I'm excited for you because you are going to learn the ocean wave. Once you learn the ocean wave, your brain will never be the same. I'll explain a little bit that later. But first, take a moment, subscribe, and leave a comment. I enjoy hearing from you guys. You got any questions or comments? Let me know. So let's get started with the ocean wave. It's a vertical loop, goes around your body. It takes three revolutions to make it all the way around. It requires a pretty good sized loop, almost as big as your Texas skip. Now for a loop that big, that's a long ways to go for rope to make it around your body in just three revolutions. That means each revolution has a purpose. What we're gonna count as revolution number one starts right here. Here's number one. It makes a complete revolution right here comes across your body there's number two number three starts here comes behind your body and finishes here and you're back to the start of number one now there's so much happening in this in this trick and that's why it's going to change the nature of your brain actually every time you learn a new skill it reconstructs your brain cells it does two things it, it changes your brain chemically which is temporary so you're going to do this trick and you're going to practice it and all of a sudden something will work. You'll have a breakthrough in your practice. And you'll have it that practice. You go, I got it now. I got it. And then you'll come back the next day and you don't got it. You know, and that's because the change in your brain that allowed you to do the trick was chemical. You have to repeat that enough times and get it right enough times so it changes the physical structure of your brain and then you'll have it forever like riding a bicycle. You need to understand what the purpose of each spin is. The purpose of this spin, number one, is to get, add momentum to that loop and, and add rope to your loop that you lost on number two and three. You got one turn here to speed that rope up, increase the centrifugal force so that loop gets, gets a little bigger. The purpose of number two is to get it across your body in front. And consequently, you spin it up here, if you just jerk it over here to number two, you're gonna pull that rope through your Honda and your loop is gonna get smaller. So as you come around, come around, you finish number one, you're coming across, you have to give that rope time to come from here. To come from here, you gotta ease it up, and as it comes over the top, you have to take that opportunity to give it another hard spin to speed it up. And the feeling is, and, and the time it works the best for me, as I come here, I come all the way over here and toss that spoke, try to toss that spoke behind my shoulder and bring it for its turn here. Bring it up here, ease it up here, and then speed it up here, and then get ready to go behind my back. Number one is to speed it up and get that centrifugal force of large in the loop. Ease it here, and then bring it over nice and hard, and then come behind. Now the purpose of the third spin is to get from here to here. Now, you can't do much for the loop. It's behind you, you can't see it. All you can do is hear and feel. If that loop, you feel it, touch you in the back, then you either didn't give it time to get over there, you hurried it, or you didn't bring your hand up here all the way. This loop that you can't see, here coming. Number three. You gotta reach back and, and give that time. It's easy to cut that short. And you don't wanna cut it short because your rope will tangle and it'll go flat and it'll hit you in the butt. There's one, two, and three. The Honda's gonna start down here. And as you bring it, your hand up over your head, that's where the Honda is. You've lifted that Honda. If you didn't have a vertical loop before, by the time you get into number three, you're gonna lift the, the Honda up here, the bottom of the loop it down here, you'll have a vertical loop right there. And come down here and give it that hard spin for number one. There's a lot happening in this trick and it's all have to do with centrifugal force. As you know, you spin a loop and that loop stays open because this, this loop is spinning. It wants to expand, it wants to get away from the, the center of the circle. But the Honda is not attached to the rope. The Honda has a little more mass right there, a little more weight. Centrifugal force is acting on that also. It wants to go away. But if you hit the right speed, then that will balance within reason. And it balances, 
because the centrifugal force expanding the loop equals the centrifugal force of that Honda wanting to flee away from the center of the circle. If you want a, a further explanation of this, I've got a, a, a YouTube video up. It's called uh, Science and the Art of Trick Roping. The ocean wave is particularly elusive because not only do you have the forces that act on every, every vertical loop, this loop is also going in a circle around my body. Centrifugal force is trying to push the rope and, and really push his Honda away from me. So as you take it around, that Honda wants to slide away. And that's probably your main issue in learning this trick, is doing this trick and keeping that loop big or even building the loop. That's why you have to give the hard spin right here to make it expand. You ease it up here, going into number two, so you don't jerk that rope through the Honda. And then you speed it up on the, on the speed it up over the top. That will give it a little more speed. You do your best to keep that loop in a loop as it's behind your back. You can't see it, can't help it much, but you can help it a little bit by giving it time and reaching back there. Then you come here, give it another good spin. The problem is gonna be when you come over to this side, you're gonna realize that your Honda has slid. Now your loop is smaller and you got a lot of extra, extra spoke here. It's good to wear a hat in this trip because if you're gonna be stubborn like a lot of us are and you're gonna try and correct it, you got this extra spoke. It's gonna form a form a wave or a loop and that loop is going to come and hit you right in the face. Now how won't protect your nose. I hit myself with the nose many times but it does tend to protect your eyes. So I wear my hat for this trick. So when you find your you're losing your loop. It's getting small and you got this extra extra spoke. Now what are you gonna what are you gonna do about that? Well you have to really kick your brain in. You just can't do the same thing over and over again to practice because that doesn't get any better. You gotta you gotta listen. You gotta listen for where you can hear that that sound of the uh, Honda sliding on the rope. Listen for that sound. And you can feel the vibration of that slide. You can feel it in your rope and hand. So you have to pay attention to which revolution you're letting your Honda slide on. It might be right here. If you're letting your rope hit the ground, it's gonna slide. It's probably not here because you're as long as you're not hitting the ground, you're speeding it up here. You can be gaining a little bit of, work, of loop here. But as you come across, you might be jerking that, sliding your rope out of your Honda on your way across on number two. You speed it up here so, so it'll have enough momentum to get around your back. On number three is probably where you're losing your loop. Now, if you lose it just a few inches, you'll regain it on this spin on number one, you'll re regain that space you lost. But if you lose too much, then you either have to come down and start over, or or you might try, come around here, sliding your hand down, and then the, the, uh, the proportion between your spoke and your loop is corrected, and you can give it that hard spin, little, little out, little it out here, and then do it all over again. But it's best if you identify which revolution you're losing it on. Each, each of these spins has a different way to keep your loop. Number one is just a nice, a nice spin and lift, and it's a lift. Lift it up there, and when the Honda gets to the top, you can give it a little slack. You can regain some, some uh, loop when that Honda's at the top. As you come over here, ease it. As you come over the top on number two, speed her up there. All you can do back here is give it time, hope you sped it up enough on number two that it carries through number three. Come around here, lift it, give it a nice hard spin, give it a little slack. You might ask, what rope can I use on this trick? I don't think my rope will do it. I use the cotton spot cord like what Will Rogers used. Now the, the Mexican charros, they use a maguey rope or a poly rope. The way those charros do this trick, it looks like they were born doing it. To them, it's nothing, but to me, it's a big deal. This is the most beautiful and graceful of all the rope tricks, the ocean wave. But you might notice that my cotton spot cord doesn't, might not look like yours. Mine is heavier than yours because I paint mine. This rope is several years old. I painted it 
several times. The paint protects the rope from, from rough surfaces. It protects it from dirt. And it adds weight. I had an 18 foot rope. I was holding on to the very end of it doing this trick and I could do it. But I wore that rope out. So I made a new one out of brand new cotton spot cord. I thought, okay, I got a brand new rope. I went out there, I could not do it. I couldn't begin to do this trick because it was too light. That rope didn't have enough mass. It needs mass. Mass in this loop to, to increase the centrifugal force to keep this Honda up here where it's supposed to be. I think it has to be a little heavier. So this rope worked a lot better and I've got another old rope that was really heavy. It worked even better than this one. So how are we gonna start it? I saw a gay roper swing it over his head, do one spin here, and then get the ocean wave going. And he was able to sustain it with the McGay rope. You know, I can't, uh, I can't do it that way. And I find it difficult to start from a dead stop right here and then just go to making this circle. I mean, I can, but it's, it's difficult. This is how it looks. You get that loop going and then just come across, start it going. And it takes a, it takes a big loop. You can't do it with a small loop because the loop has to go from here to way over there. That's a long way to go for a small loop. And there's not enough mass in that rope to counter, counteract the centrifugal force going around your body. And it helps if your lead-in trick is already going around your body. So what I'm looking for is to take that loop around my body, leading into the most important part. And the most important part, let's pretend this is the loop now. This is the, the profile of the loop. You know, at some point, it's going to be go around your body vertically. But to get it started, what you're looking for is taking that loop around your body and you see, you may start with a, a flat loop. You take it around, if you can get that far side lifted. So you got this angle. The part that's close to you is low and the far side is high. If you see that your loop has that profile, then you're all ready to take it around and, and stand it up straight behind your back and do the ocean wave. If it's like this over here, that means the high side is pointing towards you over here. Well, you might say, why don't we start it with a butterfly? Because the butterfly is already upright. Starting the ocean wave out of a butterfly is one way to do it. Because let's face it, the loop is already vertical. You start with your back to your audience. We'll go back to this being a spoke. Doing your forward spin. You're gonna turn into that. So now you got a reverse spin. Then you're gonna start coming across and doing your ocean wave. The good thing about doing this with a uh, butterfly is the fact that you're, you start over here and you come around like this already has it kind of coming in a circle around your body. It's already kind of going in an arc, so that's a good start. The problem with it is the size of the loop you need. My rope is heavy, and if my butterfly gets too big, the loop overpowers the Honda, the Honda slides. So I'm good with a butterfly at this size. But really, you need this size. And I can do it, but it's difficult. My favorite way to start the ocean wave, or my former favorite way, start with a butterfly. I'm going to build this loop to the size I want because I can stabilize this loop when it's diagonal. I'm going to bring it down here and do a flat around. And then when I'm set, I'm going to bring my Honda over here and throw that flat around up in the air so I can get underneath it. As my Honda goes to the far side, I'm going to pull that down a little bit. And guess what that does? That gives me a loop over here with the high side pointing towards me. The high side's pointing towards me. I can take this loop over here and I've got the high side away from me. I'm all set to do the ocean away. Here's how that looks.
<clears throat> the thing is to, to pop this loop up just a little bit and get underneath it, you need to come over here and, and baby it in this in this spot here and toss it up right over here so the rope doesn't so your spoke doesn't hit your loop and tangle up on itself. Well, this is a trick you might want to practice. Get it underneath your loop. And that's how it looks. You might just give it a vertical spin. Give it a vertical spin, take it right over, start right into it. That works. This loop is starting here, coming here. You got a pretty good sized loop. It's kind of difficult to get that loop past you. The timing has to be just right so the loop doesn't hang up on your arm. And it's not, it's not already going around your body. The advantage to this flat around and the lift is it's already going around your body. If you if you get it over here to where it's it's slope sloping up away from you, it's already going a circle. You're all set for your ocean way. My new favorite way to start this trick, I do the butterfly, I pause right here and build the loop to just exactly the size I want it. Well guess what? That loop has already got this angle to it. And it's up high. So if I take this down, instead of going down into a flat loop, taking around my body and tossing it, I'm gonna pretend it's tossed right here. It's already the right angle, I'll take it right here, and I've got the right angle there, and I can go straight into the uh, ocean wave. That's how this looks. This is going to be my new favorite way to start the ocean wave. When you get it, it's a great feeling. You're gonna feel smart, you're gonna feel better looking. Your wife will love you more because she won't have seen you for the last two months. You'll be out practicing all the time and that will make you more attractive to your wife. The ocean wave is a cure for some physical ailments. In fact, I know it is. No studies have been done, but I think it will cure certain things like, like a comatose person. If a comatose person learned the ocean wave, I guarantee they would be cured. We talked about how to get into the ocean wave, but how do you get out of it? Well, it's pretty easy, really. You come around here on number two, come around on number three, go on here on number one again. You can complete number one. You come across here. Instead of lifting it up here, come across here and you just make it flat. Come over the top of it and then you got a, a, a flat loop. You can decrease your energy in it, let centrifugal force make that small, pick it up here, and go back into a butterfly if you like. The Mexican ropers, who are expert at the ocean wave, they take their ocean wave over here, bring it around here, and do a body juggle, or, or slow it down and, and with the big loop, and do all the fancy leg stuff. It's good luck with your ocean wave. When you complete the ocean wave, you're going to feel like you've done something. Have a good time, take a second, uh, subscribe and, uh, and post a comment. You know, maybe something you didn't understand or maybe you've got a good way that you can start the ocean way up. I, I would uh, be glad to hear it. If you have any questions about how to set your rope up or how to paint your rope, you might take a look at these videos here. Good luck. Have a great time with the ocean way. I'm glad you're here.